A grown, jobless, and homeless man ends up dying in a car accident, and while thinking his life was certainly over, moments later he opens his eyes in the hands of a foreign couple, speaking in an unknown language. It took the man a few seconds, but he soon realizes that he has been reincarnated in the body of Rudius Greyrat, the firstborn child of Paul and Zenith. Rudy had his memories intact from his past life, so as he continues to live this new life, he couldn't help himself from getting distracted by the housemaid Lilia. A little while had passed ever since the reincarnation, and by this time, Rudy was under the impression that he was somewhere in the countryside of Europe. While fooling around, Rudy ends up hurting himself, and that was the moment when he finds out that he's not in a different continent, but a different world altogether, as here, magic is actually a thing. Rudy finds himself getting really curious about all this magic stuff, so as he grows up, he starts reading some books about it. Rudy started off by learning the new language, and soon, he still manages to pull off some basic water spells. The guy's curiosity keeps on growing, and as time passes, he starts figuring out more of the stuff that he can and can't do. During a usual reading session, Rudy ends up casting a bigger spell that he initially intended to, and that draws the attention of Paul and Zenith. After noticing Rudy's aptitude for magic, his parents hire Roxy Magurdia as his magic teacher. On their first meeting, Roxy assumes that Paul and Zenith were just crazy, and that such a little kid could never do magic casting, but after the parents persist, Roxy agrees to let Rudy demonstrate his skills. During practice, Rudy ends up messing up the spell while trying to peek under Roxy's skirt, but after seeing him cast the spell without incantations, Roxy agrees to join the house and teach Rudy, making him feel like even an ex-jobless bum like him can actually redo life. Later, Rudy reminisces about the last day in his previous life, and we see how pathetic of a life he was living until he eventually got kicked out of his room and died in an accident. From time to time, Rudy was still bothered about all those events, but his new life was going pretty well and he was learning a lot from Roxy. Real soon, Rudy was able to master intermediate level magic, and now he was also able to retain a greater amount of overall magic power. On the side, Rudy was also taking sword lessons from his father, but he wasn't quite the prodigy in this type of combat. Life was good for Rudy, but he still felt that past trauma from time to time that kept him restrained within his home. Roxy's being around was definitely helpful for Rudy, but after spending a year with her, he soon realizes that in order to pursue his magical journey, he eventually will have to move out of his comfort zone. By this time, Rudy had turned 5 years old, and after having a grand celebration party, Roxy reveals that tomorrow she will be conducting Rudy's graduation exam. Rudy didn't like this lifestyle of his coming to an end, and throughout the following night, the trauma of his depressing past life kept haunting him. On the next day, Rudy was still scared to go outside of the house for the exam, but Roxy helps him out here and encourages Rudy enough that he overcomes his fear of being hurt by other people. After making it to an open field, Roxy demonstrates a sacred level magic spell to Rudy, but on his turn, Bro pulls off a spell far superior to Roxy's, making her certain that she has nothing left to teach him. Roxy congratulates Rudy for passing the exam, and after reaching back home, she gathers her stuff to go on her own journey, while Rudy thanks her for everything she did for him. After finally overcoming his fear of touching grass, Rudy starts going outside on his own, and while walking around, he appreciates the surrounding while also interacting with strangers in town. During this stroll, Rudy comes across a group of three kids, bullying a fourth one, and as his past self didn't allow him to just watch, Rudy jumps in to help the kid in trouble. Rudy was already a saint class magician, and beating three normal five-year-olds was really nothing for him. Rudy tends to the fourth kid afterwards, and he helps him clean up. Despite the obvious beauty, Rudy assumes that he is a boy and starts calling him Sylph without even hearing his full name. Sylph wasn't able to make friends due to his hair color, so Rudy being nice was appreciated by him. In the evening, Rudy gets back home to an angry Paul awaiting him at the door, and he ends up getting into an argument with his father telling him how he should have acted better instead of beating those kids. Rudy wins that argument rather easily, and that makes Paul realize that raising kids isn't easy after all. In the next six months, Rudy continues to play outside with Sylph, and the two of them become great friends with Rudy, teaching him magic as well. Finding out that Sylph can also cast magic without incantation took a hit at Rudy's ego, but he didn't mind a little competition with his very first friend. While playing, Rudy and Sylph get soaked in the rain, and they head on over to Rudy's place to clean up. While trying to take a bath, Rudy finds out the surprising fact that his friend Sylph was actually a girl named Sylphietti. Sylphie runs outside crying, and after a little lecture from Paul, Rudy firms his resolve to explain himself to Sylphie. 
Despite the preparations, Rudy still blunders and makes Sylphie cry and that leads to her avoiding him for the next few days. Eventually, Paul helps Rudy understand that he should explain himself better to Sylphie, and despite the awkwardness between them, they sort things out and get their relationship back to where it was before the big reveal. The Grey Rats were already pretty happy with their lives, but their level of joy increases tenfold upon finding out that Zenith is pregnant again. The whole family was overjoyed, but this mood doesn't last all that long, as soon Lilia reveals that she is pregnant as well. Obviously, the child was Paul's, but even though he tried to explain himself multiple times, Zenith was just not having it this time. Zenith was feeling betrayed, and Lilia was extremely ashamed of being a slave to her urges. The whole house was filled with a depressed vibe when Zenith pulls herself together and asks Lilia about what she planned on doing from here on out. Lilia was planning to leave after helping with Zenith's childbirth, but anyone could tell that she and her child wouldn't survive the outside world for long. The situation wasn't really going anywhere when Rudy heads up and tries to sort things out. Rudy really appreciated everything Lilia did, so he mercilessly puts all the blame on Paul and sets the conversation in a way where Lilia seemed a victim to the scum Paul was. This plan worked extremely well as Zenith accepted Lilia's family and while Paul was in for a lot of trouble, Rudy earned loyalty and gratitude for Lilia. Two girls, Aisha and Norn, were born in the household and things got pleasant for the family again over time, with Lilia being way closer to Rudy now. Rudy gets to know more about Paul's past, and despite him being unfaithful to some, Rudy couldn't help but respect the man for the grind, as his own mind was also that of a middle-aged degenerate. During all this, Rudy had turned 7 years old now, and Paul suggested he consider going to school as it was normal for kids his age. While playing with Sylphie, Rudy brought up the subject, and after seeing Sylphie's reaction, he figured that after all, he can't just leave her behind. On that night, Rudy received a letter from Roxy, encouraging him to go to Ronoa Magical Academy to improve his skills. Rudy was determined to go, but after talking about Sylphie with his family, Rudy finds out that they can't pay for his tuition fee, let alone hers as well. Rudy decides to take on a job to pay the tuition, but on the next day during practice, things go unexpectedly for him as his parents forcibly send him over with a friend of theirs named Gislaine so he can attend school and pursue his journey to become a skillful mage. Which brings us to the end of today's recap. Thanks for sticking till the end and let us know what you guys think in the comments. Will he able to pull off paying the tuition fees? And what's gonna happen with him and Sylphie? Guess we'll find out in the next episode. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this on your feed. With that said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!